In this episode of the Azure Essentials Show, we're continuing our conversation with two Microsoft Corp Vice Presidents on how co-pilots can be used to break processes and discipline silos. Welcome back to the Azure Essentials Show. I'm your host, Jacob Benfeld. At the end of part one, Uli has just shared his thoughts on how enterprises can cultivate a culture of curiosity. So let's pick up on that conversation where we left off. So Uli, let me uh, build on what you're saying, sort of how do you create a culture of curiosity, right? So there are two things that I have seen in addition to what you were just describing. So one is this idea of hackathon. Until now, hackathon meant we started programming something. And one of the things that we have seen and is, is people doing hackathons in the sense of, look, I used AI to achieve the following. Let me show it to you. It's a kind of application. It's my reasoning chain. So people really love showing that off. They achieve amazing things. And bringing that into the hackathon culture, we found, you know, we've seen hundreds, if not thousands of these hackathon se uh, sessions in some of the early customers. The second one is a technical answer, which is you can teach AI to suggest things that improve the process. Mm -hmm. So just like when you go to an e-commerce site and you mm -hmm. see people who buy X also buy, you know, want, want to buy Y, and that helps you a lot. Here, we also need to teach the AI to suggest breaking of boundaries. So there are the two things. Give people exposure to what they didn't know before and give permission to break the boundaries. Yeah. Uh, no, Vijay, this is a great point, and and I was just uh, there's one thing I, I want to not pivot, but I want to come at this from a different lens. So I was reading through a, a Price Waterhouse uh, CEO survey, and it says that you know forty percent of CEOs who think that their companies will not be economically viable a decade from now. Okay. So. I, I mean, in the in this context of of you know cross boundaries, cross silos, amplifications, uh, you know subject matter expertise coming together and breaking down silos, you know what kind of executive support? Maybe support is a vague word. What kind of executive direction and involvement do you believe is needed? to make this uh, transformation uh, towards radical product innovation happen um, in this in this context. I mean, Uli, does it make sense? Yeah, of course. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if the C-suite is not on board, uh, a lot of people can do all sorts of interesting things, but they're not really transforming the company. Um, and there are many great examples that we have uh, that went through the various phases. Let's say you go from on-premise to the cloud. How do you go and derive value from this movement, uh, because you now have access to all of this innovation and people are eager to use this innovation, but now they need encouragement from above to drive this kind of thing. And again, we're moving um, much, much faster with respect to B2B integration, B2C integration, new ways of working with the ecosystem and so forth. Um, but the C-suite has to have the courage to go and enable and empower their teams to go and use this innovation and drive it from there. And I think it's... And really, let me just, uh, sorry about this, but no, this, no, no, no. in my opinion, that's the head on the nail. Right? I mean, the, the C-suite having the courage, because if 40% of, of, of CEOs believe that they, they will not have a viable business in the next decade from now, it, there is an element of sort of saying, how do we grab onto these new uh, you know, fundamental capabilities that weren't here two years ago? And, and how do we as C-suites, how do we as boards start thinking about how to, uh, you know, get that, you know, those 10 seconds from the peloton up at Duez, as we're talking, as the, you know, Tour de France is, is riding in the back here of my TV, right? How do, how do boards and C-suites think about that? I mean, do, do you care to sort of yeah, share I mean, the, the good news is there's lots of literature. Um, it's still the same, crossing the chasm. Um, is the classic on this one. And part of this is you have to look at your existing business. You have to think about the future business you believe you can have or you want to have. Then you have to figure out how you get from A to B. And that's where I think it's getting 
uh, even more important to really think about this and to not be afraid to eat your own business yourself. Because if you just don't disrupt yourself, then you might end up in the 40% that the PwC survey clearly outlined. And therefore, uh, AI can help you, but AI also is a risk. So if your competitors or new entrants uh, use AI from the very beginning to build their business, then they might, might invalidate you. And so really thinking through how you go and understand where your business needs to go, and then how do you use AI to get there um, is going to be critical. And it's going to be even more critical now than in the previous transformation, simply because AI has so much power uh, to help, but also dis to disrupt. Uh, Uli, this is fantastic. And Vijay, before uh, before sharing your perspectives on this, so so I just want so so uh, boards uh, get this on your agenda. Uh, get this into the boardroom. Have these conversations. Uh, Vijay, any any thoughts from your end? Yeah. So before generative AI, I used to see. Uh, CXOs, you know, EVPs, SVPs, coming in for quarterly reviews, six monthly reviews, which was great. Huge support. They knew how to marshal resources. And then people went and did the work. What I'm seeing with generative AI is that people attend meetings you would never have expected them to attend. And there are many factors, but one of those is that generative AI can change with business owner feedback, if you say change the tone or don't offer this, you you know data scientists and, and application creators can show this in real time and help people try new things out. So what we're seeing is this new AI, and I think Uli said this in an earlier session, affects everything. It affects how you think, and how you think can be can affect the AI. So basically, the the connection between the AI and the senior leaders is more direct now. Mm -hmm. So yes, they should support, but the way they're supporting and getting involved, that's very heartening. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, thank you, Uli. Uh, we, we, we are, you know, we're wrapping this session. I, I, I really enjoyed this, uh, this conversation. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, continuing. Uh, our next session is going to be um, putting uh, co-pilots uh, or co-pilots for putting esoteric tools to work. So basically, it's going to be a, a continuation of this session. Um, so uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jacob. Okay. And absolutely, Uli. It's been great fun as well. Look forward to gathering again. Thank you. Thank you.